Well, hello and welcome to our Bible devotional. Today we're going to be starting in Ephesians, starting in Ephesians, and we're going to be looking at the very first verse of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 1, where it says this, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. So as is typical in, in ancient letters, they start with the sender's name, which was Paul. Sometimes he's called Saul. Saul is his Jewish name. Paul is his uh, Roman name. Sometimes you will hear people talk about how his name was changed, but there's really no indicator that his name was changed. It was very common for people to have both a, a, a Hebrew name, if they were Jewish, and a Roman name, and Paul had that. And he's the human writer uh, of really most of the New Testament, certainly most of the New Testament uh, epistles, which in itself is astounding because if you think about where he came from, he's uh, he's persecuting the saints. He's the, he's the most vicious opponent of the way of Christianity. He's jailing them. He's executing them. But then he has this divine encounter with Jesus as recorded in Acts chapter 9. He's radically transformed. So instead of, instead of persecuting, he begins becomes the greatest promoter of Christianity. It kind of shows you how God can change somebody's life. Uh, imagine if, if uh, uh, President Obama was promoting President Donald Trump uh, for the next election, or, or vice versa. Imagine President Trump was promoting Hillary Clinton for the next election. You would think, that's weird. That's crazy. These people are enemies. They're opposed to each other. Something radical has happened, and that's exactly what happened with the Apostle Paul. Uh, and God was going to use him. He, he was God's chosen instrument, particularly to focus on ministering to those outside of the Jewish nation, the Gentiles. Uh, he's called an apostle. An apostle means somebody who's been sent as a representative or an emissary or another. In this case, he's an apostle of Christ. He has actually authority over the church. He's a representative of Christ. Christ. Sometimes the word apostle is used just in the sense of a missionary uh, or somebody who's a representative of the church, but this is a claim to authority. He's an apostle of Christ, which means he has the right to instruct us, command us, and we have the responsibility uh, to listen. So whenever he starts this way saying, I am an apostle of Christ, what he's saying is, I'm giving you, as a representative of Jesus, his word. Uh, we tend to rebel against anybody telling us what to do as part of our flesh. Uh, we want to say, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Who made you the boss? But we need to understand, when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the apostles, this is not advice uh, for the latest bestseller. This is not Oprah Winfrey. This is not the experts say. This is God himself speaking through his representative to us. And to ignore what the Bible says is to disregard and disobey what God himself says. He says he's an apostle of Christ Jesus. That means Christ is not Jesus' name. It's his title, his position. He's the Messiah. Uh, that's what Christ means, the anointed one, which means he's the promised ruler of all things and the promised savior that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis throughout the whole Old Testament. There's this promise of a coming savior called the Messiah, called the Christ. Well, Jesus is that Messiah. And there are many blessings, many promises associated with that Savior to those who come under his rule. And so what Paul is telling us when he says, I'm, a, I'm an apostle of Christ Jesus, he's telling us Jesus is the one person where we can experience all those great promises in the Old Testament. He is the one. He goes on to say, the apostle Paul does in that same verse, that he's an apostle by the will of God. Uh, Paul didn't s decide, you know what, I... I when I grow up, I want to be an apostle. This was, it wasn't a personal decision. This was God's decision, God's plans, uh, God's purpose. We, we work best when we work within the calling and the gift area that God has given us uh, rather than choosing and, and deciding our own and following our own ambitions uh, and working outside of the gifting and the abilities that God has gift, gifted us with or called us to. He then says he's writing to the saints. The saints don't refer to particularly good people. We think sometimes that the word saint is somebody with a halo and somebody who's been promoted and recognized as particularly uh, good and moral and pure and loving. But the word saint just means holy. It means set apart for God's purposes. And all Christians are saint. I'm Saint Larry speaking to all Christians who are also saints. That's not expressing the idea of being better than or promoting, or promoting the idea of self-righteousness. 
But being called saints was a reminder of our responsibilities and our priorities. We are called to be set apart, to be a different people than the world, to not be like the world, to be separate from the world. In the same way, when I was in the army, uh, the commander would sometimes stand up before the soldiers and say, you are soldiers in the U.S. Army. He was reminding them, you can't live like other people. You can't live like the world around you. You can't act like civilians. You are a soldier. You have a special responsibility. Same thing is true with being called a saint. And then he concludes that verse by saying, those who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Faithful means loyal, committed, uh, 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 not turning away from. And that's exactly what Christians are. They're not perfect. They struggle, they, they fall short, but they are committed to Jesus Christ. So I hope you consider, it's just the beginning, it's just an introductory verse, but as we get further into Ephesians, we'll see some great truths that will be uh, shared with us about our riches in Christ Jesus. Have a blessed day.